Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, what I have behind me is 100% USDA certified organic firewood. And what I'm gonna show you today is uh, that my organic firewood, non-GMO, is uh, it's ready for the stove as soon as you cut it down. Hey guys, I'm Elliot. This is Everything Elliot. Today, we're gonna be taking this tree that we cut down the other day. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. And if you're not subscribed, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame. We're gonna split this firewood up today. We're gonna throw the moisture meter on it, see what it comes out to be, see if standing dead wood dries enough for you to throw it right in your uh, wood stove. I'm hoping it's going to be, I think it's going to be, but uh, we're gonna find out. First things first, let's get the splitter started. It's about, uh, I don't know, five degrees outside. This thing hasn't run, so we're gonna see if it'll, it'll fire up in this cold. Now this is my Rugged Made RS322, I think is the official term for it. Um, I've had this for about a full year now. I've used it to split all my wood. And just to prove to you that it's nice and cold, there's the muffler, got my hand all over it. We'll see if it fires up. Choke, a little bit of throttle. So while this is warming up, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a random piece of wood. I'm not gonna take one from the bottom. Obviously I know the bottom of the tree is gonna be more moist than the top. You were wrong. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab something in the middle. I'm not going to be burning this this week anyway. I have plenty of wood to get me through, but this is for science, and we're gonna find out together. Got my hookaroon over there, love using that thing. We're gonna grab a piece of wood. Hopefully the splitter's, uh, spitter? Spitter. Hopefully the splitter will be warm enough to split it right now. So since the hookaroon's already in that piece right there, we'll just grab that one. I randomly picked a piece through the hickaroon. Hickaroon? It is so cold out here, I'm trouble. Yeah. It is so cold out here, I'm having trouble speaking. So we'll just grab that piece right there. Man, is that a nice piece of wood. No rot in it whatsoever. Nice and clean. Let's get it split, throw the moisture meter in it. So we got a couple pieces split up here. And what I think we should do is we'll test middle of the tree, top of the tree, and bottom of the tree. Now, what I've done here is I've split a piece and I've got 
you know, a piece near the center um, right here. So we'll throw the moisture meter right in here. We're about three inches into the wood. So to give you an idea, you know, three inches were right there. We're getting near the heart of the wood. We'll see what this comes up to on the moisture meter. Keep in mind, anything below 20% is, uh, is about good enough to burn. Hopefully this thing turns on. Oh, look at that. Let's do this together if I can. Here we go, I'll put it in there. It's in there. Oh, it goes away. Hold on, is there a hold button? Let's see what this button does. Okay, so 22.5 is what the center of this wood is. Let's see. So the, again, that was right in here. Let's do the edge near the outside of the tree and see what that comes up to be. Oh, I gotta hit the hold button again. So if you do near the outside, you come up with 15.3. Now, just to make sure that's not a fluke, here's a good center piece of wood. It's got no bark on it anywhere. Let's, let's, uh, let's test this one. So that's 25.4%. That's right in the center of the tree. So that's a good baseline. I bet you in a couple weeks of sitting, this would dry right out. All right, let's grab something from the base of the tree. See what the moisture difference is from the base, and then we'll grab the top. These are massive pieces of wood. For a 22 ton splitter, I'm blown away at what this thing does. So I took the four way wedge off because I'm gonna split this thing right down the center and we'll take a reading right out of the heart of the wood because we've already found out that the center is more moist than the outside. I mean, I kind of figured that, but uh, I wanna split it right in half that way we can grab a uh, measurement right out of the center of the piece of wood. All right, now that we've got the center opened up, let's take a measurement. Now remember, this is the base of the tree. 23%, so this is the base of the tree, 23%. Let's do the outside here, that was the center. 16.1. So judging by this, it seems like it doesn't make a difference where in the tree you grab the piece of wood from. I thought the base would be more moist because it'd be pulling some groundwater up like the tree acting like a sponge. I understand it's not alive. It hasn't been alive for two years but I thought it would just naturally soak up groundwater. Guess I'm wrong because we're getting about the same readings out of the base of the tree as we did the middle. I'm gonna get this thing split up. We're gonna grab a piece from the top and try that one. Now I'm interested to see what that one is. I'm thinking it might be more dry, but I'm thinking the top might be grabbing more wind and thus being more dry. So I'll get this split up and we'll uh, grab a top piece.
All right, with a piece from the base complete, we'll grab a piece from the top and see what the difference is. Considering there was no difference between the base and the middle of the tree, I mean, I wanna be positive and think that there's gonna be a difference and just this whole thing wasn't a waste of time. I mean, I guess it's not a waste of time. I gotta split the wood anyway. So let's grab a piece from the top, throw it on the splitter and do science. All right, that's the very top piece of the tree that I cut. Or I should say, that's the very top of the piece of the section of the tree that I cut that I pulled out. As you can see, the size difference from the last log to this one. You can see really how skinny this tree got when it went up. I think there's gonna be a difference. Let's find out. right down the center let's throw the meter on it right across the heart like I've done 23.2 this tree has made a liar out of me I thought it was gonna be drier at the top it's not let's try the outside 18.2 science sometimes you don't get the answer you're looking for and in this case, I didn't. The tree is the same moisture level throughout the entire thing. That's weird. Well, I certainly didn't get the results I thought I was going to get. I thought the base of the tree would be really moist. Moist. The middle would be middle ground, if you will. And the top would have been the most dry. I find it really interesting that it's about the same moisture level throughout the entire tree. Now, I could go through this tree, take measurements, make tables, but I'd have to measure everything, split every piece, measure every piece. I'm not gonna do that. But I will make a little chart on the moisture readings that we got just from these three pieces. So as you can see, the base, the middle, and the top are all about the same. They're close enough that I wouldn't say it's been a drastic change in moisture from the base to the top. I find this interesting because, well, I like interesting things and I thought we'd get a little bit of a difference here. Unfortunately we didn't and it's a little bit moist for me to throw in my stove that I'd be comfortable with. Would it burn? Yes, of course it would burn. Would it burn as hot as it possibly could? No it won't. I like to keep everything under 20% and ideally around 15%. That's where I like to burn my wood. Everybody's different. It depends on your climate, depends on the humidity in the area that you live in. If you live in a really humid area, you're not gonna get that moisture content all the way down. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know I did. I gotta split the rest of this wood because it's not gonna split itself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and until the next video, hope you guys have a great day.